Hi guys, welcome to another lecture. And uh, today we will be discussing about uh, frontal dis uh, dysfunction, frontal loop dysfunction. And uh, before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you haven't already downloaded our awesome apps, if you are a pediatric PG resident, please go and download it. Very important, uh, you know, the best residents master classes available on my app. And if you are a neat PG and INESC resident, please welcome on board. I have the best, one of the best image based session that is for pediatrics so please download the app from the link in description and there are multiple free videos from which you can learn and you can uh, you know see if you want to join it or not so frontal lobe frontal lobe is very important as i as you might know and the frontal lobe if you see the brain like this okay this is the brain okay okay so this is the central gyrus this is the cent sorry this is the central sulcus central sulcus and anterior to the central sulcus is the pre central gyrus okay which is the primary motor cortex okay this is the primary motor cortex this is the first important gyrus in the area of the frontal lobe okay so this is the location of the pre central gyrus now this frontal lobe is separated from the parietal lobe from by the central sulcus and it is separated from the temporal lobe by the lateral sulcus this is the lateral sulcus and this is separated this separates frontal lobe from temporal lobe so this is what you see now what are the five important areas that are very 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 important in the frontal lobe so first area is the precentral gyrus precentral gyrus okay now this precentral gyrus is the primary motor area it is supplied by middle cerebral artery it is supplied by middle cerebral artery and it is a primary motor area and motor area what area does it uh, control so face there is face arm leg and trunk <clears throat> so this is the uh, thing that it controls and leg above the knee above knee not below the knee above the knee only it controls below the knee it is something else we will see in the lecture Okay, so that is very important that above knee it is controlled by the precentral gyrus. Very important, and it is supplied by MC. Now, when there is abnormality in the precentral gyrus, what do you have is that you have either monoplasia or you have hemiplasia, depending upon the extent of damage. <coughs> hemiplasia. <coughs> okay. Now, the second important area that you need to know is Broca's area. Broca's area and as you all know Broca's area is uh, in the dominant it is in the dominant side of the inferior part inferior part of frontal lobe in the dominant hemisphere okay no in, not in the down dominant hemisphere so when this is abnormal when the dominant hemisphere frontal lobe is involved you have Broca's aphasia Broca's aphasia patient speaks fluently but uh, no so patient cannot speak fluently patient finds the words patient cannot speak fluently while in warnick's aphasia patient speaks nonsense fluently okay here the patient cannot speak fluently and there is some degree of abnormality in articulation okay so that is broca's aphasia the third and the very important part supplementary motor area supplementary motor area this area is anterior to the primary motor area and this motor area supplies supplies uh, you know it controls it controls head and eye movements eye movements on up to opposite side to opposite side like imagine the left frontal area this left frontal area which i'm showing this will control my movement on the opposite side okay it will control my movement on the opposite side and when there is a lesion when there is a lesion then at that time the head turns towards the lesion head turns towards the lesion so if uh, I have a lesion on my left side, this movement, this movement I'm showing is not possible. So only this movement is possible. Okay. So it turns on the side of lesion. Okay. Fourth and the most important part of what makes us civil, what makes us human. And as you know, frontal lobe is also known as the civil lobe. This prefrontal area is very important. And this prefrontal area controls the all the civility that is present in the humans. 
and this prefrontal area was first recognized see prefrontal area is a reason for the emotions uh, you know the emotions uh, are though they are you know they are uh, recognized in amygdala but this is what you know this this prefrontal area takes and processes the emotion and makes you feel the emotion okay so imagine that you do you are an emotional less robot okay you are an emotion less robot then the prefrontal <coughs> area of yours is damaged now uh, there was a case history uh, of damage of prefrontal disc inhibition and it was in phineas gage railroad injury very important but this was first you know studied by dr antonio damasio antonio damasio now this was very important he had many patients with frontal lobe injury whose entire personality whose entire life changed after the frontal lobe injury how so there are usually this prefrontal area is damaged when there is bilateral artery abnormality bilateral artery abnormality bilateral aca this is supplied by aca broca's area again mca superior branch of mca that is broca's area okay mc okay so uh, this prefrontal area is supplied by ac and when bilateral damage is there then only this syndromes arise and the patient's personality absolutely changes now there's a dr antonio dabasio in his book the cards error has told us wonderful things about this lobe so primarily there are three syndromes which i need you to know orbital frontal syndrome orbital frontal syndrome and frontal convexity syndromes and medial frontal syndrome now what are this now these are the syndromes uh, you can you, if you do not remember them separately just remember that what are the features of prefrontal injury so in orbital frontal syndrome the patient become disinhibited disinhibited means ke jo man mein aaya wo bol diya like if you do not like the food in the mess you go and you do not like the food then you tell the mess person are bekar khana bana hai without thinking of any consequences so that is the disinhibited behavior that you uh, go you are going on the road and you tell any woman are tu to maal lag rahi hai and you get hit by everyone but you do not know that why did you get hit okay so that is what happens so that is again very important disinhibited then there is poor judgment there is poor judgment you cannot judge what is more important one of the patients of dr antonio damasio had so poor judgment that he could not recognize that what was important was uh, attending the company meeting important or was going to buy stapler pins important so that is you cannot make a judgment that which is which is important and which is not and these are emotionally labile patients emotionally labile patients now this frontal convexity syndrome this patients have apathy they do not have any feelings all the emotions are gone they cannot feel any emotions they are indifferent you do not have any emotion you are indifferent you do not give a f okay and there is a poor abstract thought poor abstract thought and the last one medial frontal syndrome you are a kinetic you do not have any motivation in life mera life ko jhand ho gaya hai क्या करेगा मैं उठ के एकदम निहिलिस्टिक ओके सो ए काइनेटिक एब्सोल्युटली ए काइनेटिक देन इनकॉन्टिनेंट जहां भी सोएगा वहां पे मूटेगा सो इनकॉन्टिनेंट जहां पे सोएगा वहां पे हगेगा ओके सो दैट इज इनकॉन्टिनेंट एंड स्पार्स वर्बल आउटपुट डज नॉट स्पीक मच ओके सो दैट इज द फीचर्स ऑफ द एबनॉर्मैलिटी इन द प्रीफ्रंटल एरिया एंड आल्सो देयर इज डिस्टरबेंस ऑफ गेट all the primitive reflexes reappear like palmar grasp or pout reflex primitive reflex reappear okay and there is a paratonia there is a resistance there is a resistance to passive movement and this is usually seen in the bilateral damage not in the unilateral damage unilateral damage it is rare okay so this is the prefrontal abnormality and third is if you take a coronal section of the brain you see that the two brain hemispheres are different and they are connected by something known as corpus callosum okay so this is the right hemisphere this is the left hemisphere so on the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere if you go in this cleft where it is from this area is the paracentral lobule and this paracentral lobule has the bladder and a bowel control 
Now this the this are not the bladder and bowel centers. They are they have bladder and bowel control. So how does this manifest? Is that you might have a patient who are like hey, if you look, I cannot pee. Okay. Now who is looking you while you pee? You do not know. But just saying that in the patients who are in bathroom, they tell that I cannot pee in public. Okay. When someone is looking, I cannot pee. So this is the area which controls that that you are ashamed of peeing in public. So that is very important. Bowel bladder control is there. but it is not the bowel bladder center and the second part is it controls the motor activity below the knees so below knees now as you might have understood it this area is supplied this paracentral lobule paracentral lobule is supplied by aca okay so whenever there is uh, mca damage this aca area is spared Thus, all the things below the knees is normal when there is a MCA territory infarct. Okay, in MCA territory infarct, when you have quadri paresis, hemi paresis, if it is unilateral, you will have hemi paresis. The area below the knee will be spared because it is supplied by ACA. So that's all for today, and that's all for the frontal lobe. And I'll see you in the next one. And if you like my content, please follow me on Instagram and please follow me on Telegram, and I'll see you in the next one.